Dr. Walker, thanks for joining us here on Health Connection. We appreciate you being here. We appreciate your time. Our topic is runaway depression. The title mm -hmm. is We're in a World of Hurt. So let's start with a definition. Uh, we, we say we're depressed, but well, from a clinical standpoint, what is depression and what are its most common symptoms? Okay, that's a simple question, but the answer is a little bit complicated. All right. Uh, depression uh, is a clinical syndrome that is experienced in different ways by different people, but there are classic signs of depression. Uh, most people experience depression as being a depressed or sad mood that happens most of the day, nearly every day, or they may experience a loss of interest or pleasure in activities or things that they normally enjoy, also most of the day, nearly every day, and this has to persist for a period of at least two weeks for us to consider it to be clinical depression. Um, and they certainly may have both of those symptoms. And then there are other symptoms that go along with depression. Uh, some of those symptoms could be uh, a change in appetite, uh, a change in weight, um, a uh, change in terms of a person's energy level, uh, sense of fatigue, uh, their activity may slow down or they may feel agitated, uh, they may have thoughts of worthlessness or unwarranted guilt, um, and they may even have thoughts of suicide. Those are some of the other uh, symptoms of depression. They may have trouble uh, concentrating. They may feel like they're having memory difficulty. Uh, but most people do not have all those symptoms of depression who are suffering depression, but most people have five or more. Draw a distinction for me. Um, okay. The difference between episodic or occasional depression and chronic or long-term depression. Yeah. Well, uh, first of all, there are people who just due to the natural course of their lives experience maybe significant losses and, and they'll experience some of the symptoms of depression as part of their grief process. And in that case, that really isn't clinical depression, that really is because they're in grief. Although actually if those symptoms don't resolve in a period of weeks or at least within a few months, then it can actually develop into a clinically significant depression. People who have clinically significant depression may have a single episode of depression that could be any severity from mild to severe. Um, could, you know, some people may uh, just feel like they've become very ineffective and unhappy and don't like their lives uh, to a severe case where people absolutely can't get out of bed, uh, don't go to work, uh, stop eating, don't have enough energy to really get anything done and uh, that obviously, and they may even develop psychotic symptoms sometimes like hallucinations or delusional thoughts or things like that. So there's a gamut of um, symptoms that people can have in depression. Uh, you, then other people actually have a lifelong pattern of recurrent bouts of depression. So they will have these periods where they could have a depressive episode. Again, any level of severity but in between these bouts, they either partially or fully recover back to normal functioning. That's recurrent major depression. And then finally, there are some folks have a very persistent low grade type of depression. This doesn't really stop them from being able to work or function at home, but it definitely impacts their lives. They don't experience as much pleasure or joy as most people do in their life activities and certainly although they may be able to function up to a certain point, it impacts their relationships, their work efficiency, and just their overall satisfaction with life. Uh, so depression does come in multiple forms and the treatment though is similar in all cases. Well, okay, you segue nicely. What mm -hmm. is the best way to treat chronic or episodic depression? Okay. Um, the, uh, de there are a number of medications that are uh, often prescribed for uh, depression. Uh, these medications have been shown to be uh, at least mildly effective therapeutic agents. The worse the depression, the more effective the medication, okay? And so uh, people who have very, very mild depression, particularly if it's a reactive uh, situation, you know, to life circumstances and that sort of thing, may not need to, any medication at all. Perhaps they just need counseling or psychotherapy. In more severe cases of depression, actually it's the combination of medication and therapy that research has shown to be the most effective, at least in terms of getting the fastest treatment response. And as far as 
uh, remission of symptoms and maintaining that remission of symptoms, this is where therapy has the advantage. It's been shown that therapy actually helps people to uh, stay well for the long term. And this is probably because therapy has helped them make some changes in their perspective, in their beliefs, the way they think and the way they behave. Mm -hmm. And all of that in turn can affect their mood. Why has there been such a dramatic increase in the number of Americans who are taking antidepressant medications? I believe it's something on the order of one out of ten. Yeah, actually if you look at the latest data from the CDC, I'll change that number to one out of nine if you look at people age 12 and above. So the newer generation of antidepressants are used widely. Um, but one of the reasons is that this newer generation, and when I say newer generation of antidepressants, I'm talking about the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors and the uh, serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors, um, as opposed to older tricyclic drugs or MAO inhibitor drugs. These newer drugs are used for other conditions as well, um, particularly anxiety disorders, things like generalized anxiety, PTSD, social phobia, and conditions like that, you know, obsessive compulsive disorder. If you look at all of those disorders, that accounts for uh, disorders occurring in about 18% of the population, the adult population, each year, hmm. whereas depression is accounting for about 6%. So a lot of that increases because these medications are m more widely used. They're used also, in, for example, in people with chronic pain. Nevertheless, I'd like to make the point that depression is still a vastly undertreated condition. Um, evidence shows that uh, less than half of the people with major depression ever, ever receive any treatment at all. And we've got a major project going on here at UT Health Northeast that's designed to try to identify people with depression and get them into treatment. You touched on this earlier. How effective are antidepressant medications in treating depression? Yeah, antidepressant medications, like I say, are considered to be mildly effective agents that are more effective in people with severer depression than in the milder cases. Nevertheless, they are effective. People on medication for depression um, do get better, and the statistics say that about 31% of people on medication have had their symptoms go away within 14 weeks. If you look on down the road a little further, 65% of people treated with medication for depression will be symptom, uh, have their symptoms reduced to a subclinical level by six months. Okay. What are the most common side effects in taking these medications? Okay. Well, those newer medications that I mentioned, um, the uh, SSRIs and SNRI medications have a much milder side effect profile than the older medications, so that's the good news. But they still have some side effects, and people can suffer uh, short term when they first start the medication with some side effects, and for this reason, very often that people may be started out on a lower dose and then have the dosage increased up to the therapeutic level. Nevertheless, they may experience some dizziness or some diarrhea or some headache uh, or uh, some conditions like that that tend to just go away after, in a very short term after they begin the medication. Wow. There are other side effects that if they persist, it's really a signal that you probably need to change medications because, again, people respond differently to different medications. So someone can have a side effect with one SSRI but not with a sister drug, another SSRI. And some of the things that we really don't think should be tolerated are uh, sexual dysfunction or um, uncontrolled weight gain, which some people will have with one medication uh, more than with another. And there are some other things that people may suffer that really uh, are a signal that uh, they need medical attention, you know, confusion, profuse sweating, tremor, things like that. They probably need to get that evaluated by their doctor. If someone thinks they may be suffering from depression, from the symptoms, some of the symptoms that you mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. what's the next best step they can take? Okay, first thing they need to do is call their doctor and get an appointment. Uh, and the reason I say that uh, is twofold. A primary care physician can do a lot of evaluation with them, do blood work and this sort of thing to evaluate whether or not they may have a medical condition that may actually be causing the symptoms of depression. There are an almost innumerable number of medical conditions that as, uh, you know, as, a, as a, um, a side can cause people to have symptoms that look like depression, thyroid dysfunction being right. a, a common one. 
so they need to be worked up to be sure there's not a medical cause for the symptoms that they're uh, seeing. Uh, furthermore, most primary care physicians are trained and comfortable with treating at least uncomplicated cases of depression. So the primary care physician may be able to start a person on an antidepressant medication. More serious cases or more complicated cases may require a referral to a psychiatrist to get a specialist opinion about the best way to proceed in treatment and that the primary care physician can facilitate that. I will say though that if a person goes to their primary care physician and the physician perhaps offers them a medication but fails to offer or to refer them to counseling or psychotherapy, I would encourage the patient to ask about that because again, the combination of the two is really the best treatment. Good segue, because here's the next question. Okay. Aside from taking medication and seeking a professional therapy, are there other things that can be done to battle depression? Say, for example, exercise. Yeah, absolutely. Um, exercise has been understood for a very, very long time to have a very positive benefit on both treating depression and preventing depression. Uh, recently, there was a study at the University of Toronto that reviewed the last 26 years worth of research on uh, the relationship between exercise and depression. And what they discovered was that even moderate levels of activity, maybe just walking 20 or 30 minutes a day, several days a week, can have a significant effect on reducing uh, depression and promoting happiness. So exercise is really important. It's one of the first things I ever discuss with my patients who come in for uh, treatment for depression. Um, and then, of course, sometimes people will, um, you know, try to get involved in uh, extending their social networks and getting, in, and getting connected with people. Depression tends to cause people to be withdrawn, and they tend to uh, shy away from social contact. Their activity level drops off. They tend to want to stay at home, not get out. Um, basically, what's happening is depression is feeding itself. It's causing them to cut themselves off from sources of social reinforcement and connection with other people, which we're all really hardwired for that. And so uh, by uh, overcoming that barrier that depression is creating and getting out there and getting back in contact, getting back into church, getting back into your social circles uh, and in contact with people is a very important thing as well. And so those, those are things that people definitely uh, can do. And also if they're in therapy, they're gonna be encouraged to do that sort of thing. Natural treatments, St. John's wort, omega-3 mm -hmm. fatty acids, treatment as natural treatments for depression. Yeah. How effective? Okay. Um, these types of treatments, you mentioned St. John's wort, omega-3 fatty acids. These are things that we normally refer to as complementary and alternative medicines. Um, there has been a lot of research on these agents and when you research these sorts of agents one of the things that you do is you try to see do they demonstrate an effect that is beyond that that you would get with a placebo or sugar pill and some agents do show some potential to potentially help with depression um, if i can mention on st john's wort now that is the most commonly used natural remedy if you want to call it that for depression both in the United States and in Europe. Some of the research on St. John's wort shows that there are at least two chemicals or agents in St. John's wort that do um, affect the reuptake of serotonin, which is the mechanism of some of the newer antidepressants. So it has some of that effect. Um, the only thing about it is that also tells us something else, and that is that if you're taking an antidepressant, you certainly should never add St. John's wort on top of that. Um, you can get an interaction between the medication and the St. John's wort. Uh, and uh, in fact, there's even a very serious condition called serotonin syndrome, that if you have too much uh, of the uh, reuptake of uh, serotonin inhibited, uh, can create a medically uh, serious condition. Mainly anything you take, you need to t discuss with your doctor. In the case of omega-3 fatty acid, um, again, the research is kind of mixed on that one in terms of whether it actually is better than a placebo in terms of helping with depression. Although there's one particular omega-3 uh, acid uh, called EPA that there's a study that shows 
somewhat convincingly that perhaps that added to Prozac or fluoxetine, it may actually help enhance the effects of that medication. But again, the important thing, talk to your doctor. Be sure your doctor knows everything that you're taking. These are bioactive agents. And I will say this, if people think that by taking a natural agent, they're somehow going to avoid side effects or things like that, they're wrong. These things can have side effects just like other medications. Um, and again, I, I would say this, uh, some of the natural remedies, you don't always know the strength of the oh. substance that you're buying or whatever. And so uh, things are a little less known in some cases in terms of what you're actually taking. So. With those caveats, you know, again, with discussion with your doctor and that sort of thing, but if your doctor says go ahead, well, then I think that you should do what your doctor says. All right. And with all of that as groundwork, how serious is depression if you leave it untreated? Yeah. Well, depression certainly can be serious. Uh, it, depression can definitely impact health. Uh, for example, people who have depression are at risk for other problems. They're at risk for obesity, diabetes, heart disease, and stroke. And some of that is due to the effect that depression has on their behavior, causing you know, poor eating, lack of activity, increased smoking, increased drinking, and other factors. Plus, depression actually has an effect on the brain, which can affect the whole body. So it may not be just the behavioral changes. It may be some direct effects on the body from being depressed. So. Getting depression treated is really important. I don't know if you know that depression is the leading cause of medical disability in both the United States and Canada, and actually accounts for 10% of all medical disability. So it is a big problem, both for individuals that suffer it and as for society as a whole. Uh, and then, of course, we know that sometimes people who get depressed begin to have doubts about their worth, about doubts about the value of their life. Sometimes people begin to think others would be better off without them. They start to consider maybe taking their life. I would say anyone, of course, that's having any of these kinds of thoughts or feelings uh, need to get help immediately. And if you actually feel that you're close to taking some sort of an action, I'd say pick up the phone and dial 911. You'll get some help. Very well. Doctor, thank you very much for your time. Pleased to be here. Thank you so much.